I like Yosemite toads because we know so little about them. They are unlike any other amphibian I've ever studied. Compared to other species, they are a fascinating animal that we are just sort of discovering sort of the secrets of their lifestyle. Yosemite toad got its name because it was first described in Yosemite National Park in the early 1900s. The Yosemite toad's Latin name, Anasiris canoris, canoris literally translates in Latin to beautiful song. And I think when they originally heard it, they thought it was a bird. You might have heard this walking near a meadow. And if you don't have the reference, you have no idea what it is. but I think it's pretty magical and it does have a musical quality. So you hear this and you're excited. You're like, I want to know what this is. You could call it the singing toad. I mean, this is a very boisterous species that wants to be heard. Yosemite toads occur nowhere else except the Sierra Nevada. And they range from about 6,500 feet in elevation on up to about 11,000 feet. Yosemite toads are really special because they're a high elevation toad that are adapted for the snow. Nobody would ever expect to find a toad walking around on the snow. It's very unique. There aren't a lot of amphibians that do that. So when they come out, they come out as soon as the snow starts melting. They hop around, they're looking for mates. Since these animals have spent eight months under snow and hibernation, usually the warming of the water and the temperatures rising that triggers hormonal change inside these toes to sort of just forget everything around them and then just focus on calling to attract a mate. One of the things that I really like is you'll get one male starting to sing this trilling, beautiful song, and then slowly in other parts of meadow, you'll get competition. They're basically yelling at each other and having these fights through their song. When you are fortunate enough to be in a large enough population where there are multiple males competing for the same females, you will see this circus-like event where males are just coming out of nowhere, fighting each other, large, small, when no females are around at all. And then they'll just wrestle and fight, and it is quite comical when there's a lot of toads. So the females are coming in quite quietly, sneaking along the shoreline, want to get to the larger males, but there's sort of this wall of younger males trying to intercept those females as they're coming into the meadow. And they are often successful, but if the female can get to the larger males, the larger males will wrestle those smaller males off in breed. When a female and a male are able to find each other and actually perform the act of amplexus, the joining of a male and a female toad together, they have this coordinated ritual of leg movement, male combing the female's legs, female extending her legs, and then egg laying or what we call oviposition will begin and fertilization will take place. Toads lay their eggs in big, long strings and there can be thousands and thousands of eggs because like a lot of amphibians, it's kind of a numbers game. So maybe one of those will become an adult toad and survive to reproduce. Eggs are usually pretty easy to see. And in about three to four days, they will hatch as tadpoles. So very rapid development. Yosemite toads, tadpoles, are very distinguishable from other species like Western toads because of their jet black coloration. They have that coloration is because they're trying to absorb as much heat as they can because their reproductive time is so short. And you'll also see what they call gregarious behavior where they're all grouped together to sort of increase that localized heat to help them grow pretty rapidly. The tadpoles are actually a lot larger than what the toad morphs out to be. And Yosemite toad, right when they turn from tadpole to toads, are incredibly small. They're probably about the size of a grain of rice, and they don't grow super fast. 
So if you see a small toad about an inch long or smaller, that's probably a second or third year toad. We call those juvenile toads. They have not quite reached reproductive age, so we don't tend to classify them as adults until they're about three to four inches long. But as that toad reaches about the third or fourth year of its life, females will start to take on a different coloration. Their skin will start to blacken and take more of a pattern, where a male's coloration will stay the same as it grows from a small toad to a larger adult toad. So Yosemite toads are exceptionally hard to study because of their lifestyle. When they emerge after snowmelt, which is very difficult to predict, you have about, if you're lucky, a two-week window at any given location, depending on how large the population is, and then they disappear. Yosemite toads are a federally threatened species. So federally threatened species means they're sort of walking this line toward the edge of the cliff of extinction. We do have lots of episodes during drought years or low water years where thousands of Yosemite toads perish. So in Yosemite, we are tracking whether or not eggs and then tadpoles are making it all the way to metamorphosis. Since Yosemite toads are federally threatened, we sort of moved beyond that first step of sort of gathering information about population status, now trying to prevent them becoming an endangered species by conducting species reintroductions. And most of the work came about because we were in a drought situation where we had tadpoles drying in meadows that were gonna die. So we made an emergency decision to collect those tadpoles before the water went completely dry. The Yosemite Conservancy sponsored the rearing of these animals in captivity at the San Francisco Zoo. They renovated a formerly bald eagle rearing facility into a completely dedicated Yosemite toad rearing facility. So we took the tadpoles to the San Francisco Zoo and the zoo was actually able to rear them to adulthood, which is a huge task. People have been trying for a really long time to raise Yosemite toads in captivity with no success. So we captively reared them for two years, brought those animals back to the park and released them to a meadow they formerly occupied but have been absent for about the last 10 years. We are interested in learning their movement patterns and where they go. So we place radio transmitters on those animals. Are they hiding under a log? Are they going into a mammal's burrow? Are they staying near the meadow or are they verging out into the forest? So it's really important to protect Yosemite toads in Yosemite National Park because if pilot reintroductions like this do work, we may become source populations to reintroduce the species elsewhere, including areas outside of the park in the future. So I think Yosemite National Park is paramount for the protection and long-term prevalence of Yosemite toads on the landscape. Everybody can't go out and see a Yosemite toad. It's really hard, but one of the things about their call is that you can hear it. ever see one, you might not know that they're there, but they're kind of this tucked away little treasure that we're trying to protect.